Your story influences your business. This is Wingrove Street, an entrepreneurial leaders podcast where we hear the story behind the startup. Brought to you by Melbourne Innovation Centre. Melbourne Innovation Centre, providing business support and mentorship. Hello, I'm Michael Williams, and this week on the podcast, we talk to Lee and Roe from The Good Hands. The Good Hands is a boutique creative consultancy working with a range of startups and established small businesses. The company has excitingly been through a recent brand identity redevelopment during the COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020. Lee and Roe realised that they had outgrown their brand and visual identity an often necessary but enthralling transition for many businesses, big and small. Now, it's onto the podcast. Okay, so Lee, Ro, welcome today. Hey, well, thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so I have given a quick introduction to your uh, business and hopefully I've done it justice, but just in your own words, can you briefly give us a bit of an overview of the business um, and what you do? Mm. You want me to do it? You yeah, do it? Uh, you're, the, you're the word, sweet Lee. <laughs> I should have I should have I should have nominated someone. <laughs> I guess the the best way to explain the good hands is that we're a, a boutique consultancy that works in brand and marketing, uh, technology and digital. Um, we work with uh, we do brand and uh, so what what else do we do? Lots of things. Training, training and education. Training and creative. Um, we work with a broad range of clients. We work with the startup community, entrepreneurs, small business. We work with larger enterprises, non-for-profit. Um, some we've we signed NDAs for, so we can't tell you names <laughs> or we'd have, you know, we, we'll get in trouble. But yeah, we, we work with a pretty broad client base is pretty much what we do. And how long have you guys been doing what you do together as a team? It's been about five years. Um, I guess through through a combined kind of organisation for and a bit, but um, we've kind of consulted individually and worked individually around each other and with each other yeah. um, in the past before we actually set up our own business and started doing it as a as a joint kind of enterprise. We knew each other and we were working on, I would be working on a project and need some digital expertise. So I'd contact Ro and say, hey, do you want to work on this project with me and vice versa? And then we've worked in some agencies together before we took the giant leap to start our own business, really. What was actually behind the giant leap to take on that that business and, and do it together? We got an opportunity to um, quote for a very large, I guess, kind of creative slash digital job for the Royal Children's Hospital, actually. Okay. Um, and it was going to be a massive project. Um, and part of that requirement was we needed to be an incorporated entity. And what we realised was that everyone else was taking us more seriously than we were. Yeah. So we, okay. we, were, we better lift our game and actually sort out the business. But it was also timing, really, because mm. we were both working for other agencies and we weren't happy there because part of what occurs in, in some agency models is it's it's pr- a pretty high churn of work. Um the you know the value is in the cost not in the actual deliverables and we saw how clients were treated and we didn't mm-hmm. like it right okay um and then obviously we that's the history but then moving forward uh you've been through a bit of a brand transformation upgrade reshuffle mm-hmm. whatever you want to yeah. call it talk us through uh what that is what the sort of rebranding is and, and how you came about going through that decision yeah well we started off as um a business called the Trio Agency, and we um, we had a traditional agency style kind of business model. Where I guess the idea was to be a better version of the agencies we'd worked in, right? Uh, yeah. And you know, for the most part, it was a successful business. You know, able to pay ourselves well and working with some good, interesting clients. But um, as time went on, we actually realised there were things in the business that weren't making us happy and weren't simply weren't working. Part of it was scalability. Okay. Um, some of it was the clients that we're attracting. So we weren't actually attracting the right client base for us. Uh, what we mean by that is that uh, the right client is someone that you enjoy working with. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to have great relationships with everyone. They're not all going to be your besties. But what mm-hmm. I think we found is that people were coming to us with the solution as opposed to coming to us with um, a collaborative mindset. Uh, we, we certainly don't 
pretend that we have all the answers or that we're a one-stop shop, that we, we actually scale up and down as as required based on the work that's required. But a lot of clients would come and say, can you please just do this in this colour and we want it by Friday mm. and we want to spend five cents on it. And we're like, this is not going to work for us. Um, so that was a part of like where we were unhappy really. Yeah. And we decided to make a bit of a shift, which wasn't easy. Yeah. <laughs> what wasn't easy about the shift? Oh, letting go. Letting go. Fear. Um, you know, one of the things that we have is, and it's a, you know, a, a, a human reaction is that we don't want to feel like we've done something wrong. Yep. Um, to look on something that you've created and, and throw it in the bin because is it worth anything when you've done that? So I think there was a really big sense of have we failed because we want to change. Um, we fortunately didn't see that. We didn't see it as a failure, but we were going, it was really difficult for us to change. And when we talk about changing our brand, we're not talking about just a logo or an identity. Um, for listeners who don't understand what a brand is, um, the, the, um, the analogy I like to use is if you consider a brand a person, yep. you are not the color of your hair. You are not the clothes that you wear. Uh, yep. It is the sum of all of the things and all the experiences that people have when they connect with you. So it might be your sunny personality or the great humour that you bring to dinner parties or the care and concern you show for your grandparents. Um, you also might be a snappy dresser, which looks great, and you might wear a cool hat when you go to the mm. mall. I don't know what it is, but it's it's that all-encompassing experience that people have with you. Your brand is that. What is the experience that your customers have when they come to you? we realised our brand experience wasn't great because we weren't happy and we right. weren't attracting the right people. So that was the catalyst for change. So it's really painful to let go of something that you've created yeah. going, this monster that we've built was not serving us personally. And especially because it was also something that was on paper working. Right. So it's hard to go, well, let's let's try the unknown in exchange for something that's essentially sustaining us and our families. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that when you talk about happiness, um, you know, in, in your brand and, and creating happiness for yourselves in the workplace, obviously there's a, the emotional sense of actually being happy, but does it mean anything else to you to sort of find happiness in your brand and, and in your business? Yeah, it's combined. I mean, there's, it's not just, I guess, us being happy in terms of turning up to work and going, isn't this nice? There's also, I guess, our pride in our own work. There's our pride in, I guess, what we put out to the world because essentially being a creative agency or business we we make things yep. um so i guess being happy with what we actually generate and put out in the world is a big part of why we do this on a regular basis so even if you know works hard and a project's really kind of dragging and we're struggling with it mm. our happiness is probably more tied to did it turn out well did it solve a problem did it actually achieve something sure. um so that's 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 a big part of i guess that being happy with the brand, um, but also in terms of, uh, I guess, how people perceive us, um, not as individuals, but as a business, Sure. Um, what people value about us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's changed significantly as we've changed the brand. Part of the change also was um, how do we articulate this that was that was a huge part yes. of it and that we, we had so many conversations about it we we're like well what are we i mean we're a consultancy where people come to us and ask questions and they want to pick our brain i mean you know one of the things that i, I say i spend 70 percent of my week on the phone to clients just right. talking right and then the other 30 percent is about delivery yeah sure. so how do we change how do we communicate what we do because we still do the traditional agency style stuff but it's usually backed up by a whole strategic objective of why we make the decision to go in which creative direction do we even need a product do we even need collateral what what is it that the client needs what um what we had a hard time was articulating what is our brand now and Ro came up with a very succinct kind of phrase which he <laughs> said well we're a place for amazing ideas that's what we cool. are so when people ask what we do, and we've got that in our, the front of our building, which is we're a place for amazing ideas, that if people have got an idea and they want to work on their idea, we're the place to go to. We're not the place where you get your business cards rolled out. We can put you into the direction of someone else who can do that. Um, and since we've done that and changed our name to The Good Hands and, and identified that that's what we do, we've 
quickly attracted the right kind of people. Uh, it's interesting what's in the name as well. I like the name Good Hands, but I guess I'd be interested to see what the story is behind that name and, and how it sort of relates to the story you've just told and, and yeah, finding happiness and rebranding yourselves in that way. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah, that was – so the name was – the name came to us because we asked our clients. So as part, okay. of, a, as part of our strategy, uh, you know, it, it was really hard. Like the process was not easy and coming to the conclusion that we needed to change was not an overnight decision. It was we're still two years in the making mm. and we're still rolling it out. Right. Um, we, we, did, we took the, the practice that we do with our own clients um, when we were doing sort of strategic work is we asked our own clients. We said, what do you think of us? What are some of the things when, how do you feel working with us? What do you think we do best? What do you think you would change? You know, how do we look? How do you feel you look working with us? Right. And we got some incredible feedback. We asked 10 very distinct clients of very different um, levels of industry. So we spoke to Melbourne Innovation. We spoke to one of our large non-for-profits. We spoke to small businesses. We spoke to another marketing agency. We had a, 10 very distinct groups and we asked them all the same questions. And the feedback that we got was resoundingly, uh, it was it was really what we thought. Actually, yeah. it was really. It was, it was, <laughs> it's always good in the hypothesis well, to right, prove it was correct. Really, yeah. It was well, a, yeah. Well, it came it came to the point of and this is before we had changed our name, obviously, that they the the clients that we valued and that valued us did not see us as an agency. They didn't see us as someone to go to for their brochures. Right. They saw us as someone to go to when they had a really tricky problem to solve or a really amazing idea that they needed to get off the ground and they didn't know how to. So, and a lot of the feedback came back to things like, we trust you with our business. We're in good hands. And that actually came through in about gotcha. maybe three or four of the surveys, the phrase, we're in good hands or, you know, our business is in good hands, turned up multiple times. So as we're sifting through this, we were looking at the different phrases we could pull out to describe our business and good hands turned out to be a resounding one of them. Yeah. That, that was really where it came from, is that our clients told us what our name was. Some internal market research. Those <laughs> who probably know you best too, if they've used your services and know you on that level as well. Yeah. yeah. Very good lesson for internal market research. It, totally. And we do this with our other clients too, who say to us, hey, we want a new website. I'm like, well, have you asked your customers? Are mm. they, what are they not getting out mm. of your current website? Mm. So go to your market, ask them. Uh, it was also really scary exercise, if I'm honest. Like we had to yeah. go and be I mean, very vulnerable. And there yes. were questions about, yeah, yeah. you know, we're asking our existing customers, what don't you like about us? Yeah, yeah I know you were sort of ready for the worst almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and all yeah. the things you think they're going to say, oh, you're, you're expensive or, you're, you know, no, no, none of that. Like all of it was very useful. Mm. It was very enlightening and it really has uh, affirmed our direction. Fantastic. Yeah. So then um, obviously, you know, you're in the creative space working with a range of businesses. Um from your experiences, you know, working with clients, but also through this exercise, sort of, do you want to talk through with the listeners of why you think it's sort of important for a business of any shape, size, you know, purpose to have a clear brand and a clear identity? Mm. Um, we we were talking about this um, recently, which is, you know, a lot of people think it's like your logo. And like, really, when people come to us, they actually call my mobile or Rose mobile, they don't call the logo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the people behind the brand and the experience that you provide. So if you have a, if a staff or if you have um, a social media account, um, it is how your client interacts with you. Right. Your brand is really about the experience that people have. If people have a poor experience with you, they will remember that too. Yeah. Um, it is important that your brand is um, aligned with your values and aligned with what your customer sees as valuable. Um, it's got to be consistent. Yeah. Um, I think and I think that's probably um, a good bit of advice, especially for small businesses, because they tend to struggle with, I guess, investing a whole lot up front in that planning kind of phase. They'd rather just get doing because doing means it's done, which means, which means they can move on and, you know, start, you know, focusing on other areas of their Keep business. Going. Yeah, yeah sure. um, It's worth actually spending that time and articulating what your brand is so similar to what Lee was saying like what does what does the brand sound like what does it look like what experience should people have when they interact with it whether that's social media or the website or like the service desk front like the front person at the desk um, because if that's consistent then people build that impression of that consistent image 
Whereas when things start changing is when people start, I guess, turning off or having second thoughts about what the experience is. Yep. Um, I come from a background of kind of data analysis and technology. And it's one of those kind of early things that um, a, a data analyst learns is when you're looking at someone looking at a website, for example, and when a lot of people start disappearing from the website, that's where something is suddenly different to the rest of the website. Right. <laughs> and it's the same with a brand. So when someone you know gets to experience your brand in one way and it goes along and it's everything smooth and then suddenly something changes, they'll drop off. Now, unlike a website, you can't necessarily measure that. So knowing that your brand is consistent the whole way through yep. is one way of knowing that your sales funnel or your customer funnel is directing people to that engagement or interaction point. Okay. Is it something with your clients um, or even through your experiences in, you know, in industry, do you see that um, a lot of businesses sort of come to this point, a bit of a crossroad where they need um, you know, a brand transition or, or, you know, sort of a change in identity and upgrade in identity. Um, and do you find that many businesses and stakeholders in the businesses, can they identify it easily? Or is it something that could be something they stumble across? How do they often find it if we, they do? We've been working with someone, we're working with two clients actually at the moment who are doing, I guess, let's call them a refresh. They're, they're not doing the knockdown rebuild of the brand like we did. Right. But they knew that there were weaknesses. Okay. And the weaknesses in their brand were, well, it's not serving us well or it's too hard for our, our team to communicate or our audiences don't respond well to it. So they've identified some gaps. Okay. And that's generally when people come to us for solution. They'll say, well, what, what should we do? Um, if there's great value in the brand, don't knock it down. But what you can do is you actually can realign your brand. Okay. You can realign it. And it is asking yourself the question. I mean, one of the things that, you know, if we were to have a philosophy in our business, the question that I like to ask myself is, who am I helping? Mm. How, how am I helping? Yeah. So it's for small business when you're chasing dollars because money is really, you know, it's feast or famine in small business in many senses. Uh a good reminder for your brand is who am I helping because that will actually support your brand. Um, it's probably about alignment really and and going back to those questions, doing all that, that like looking internally, like mm. what are my values? What do we want to achieve? Why do we want to achieve it? Who are we helping? Why are we helping? How can we find them? And then you can make the tweaks. And that always doesn't need to be a logo change or a change in font no, or anything like that, right? No, yeah, no yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely not. It could be the way you communicate your message. It could be the way you're, you know, we, this one, one team that we're working with, this one company at the moment, they work in construction right. and we met with their crew. We met with their crew to talk about the value of the brand and why they should show pride. And what it was was really just engendering a bit of, pride into their business, knowing that when they show up every day and their, their clients see them, that why they need to represent the brand in a certain way. And what it did, it, it, it's encouraging for people to feel proud of where they work. And that's the brand, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it, it's yeah. not just the management and the leadership, it's the brand. Did they find joy in being part of that process too? Because often I assume some of these stakeholders, employees aren't the ones who are always making the key decisions sort of got other roles within the organisation. So they like being part of that. We absolutely process. encourage it. So yeah. when we run a strategy session with a business, we will say as many stakeholders as possible because one idea will be great. Fantastic. So, or people might just sit there and, and by, you know, just by osmosis absorb it and, and learn something. If you can get as many people in the room to contribute to the value of the brand, that's why we ask our customers, can you please give us insights into our own brand? Yeah. Because we don't have all the answers. We, you know, we're, we're busy looking at the day-to-day -day stuff. We, you know, we want the optics to be broader. Well, in some ways, they're part of your identity as well. Right? They, they're the reason you get up in the morning to service Completely. them. Completely, so, yeah. 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 Um, final question then, if you can put everything we talked about in a small little package and gave one piece of advice each or um, a small snippet of of, you know, if you're going to go through a, a, a brand identity or sort of a, a transition or an alignment, what would you say to that business in terms of making the process easier, making it more efficient, making it more effective? Have you got a sort of small piece of advice around that? Yeah. Um, one of the things we were talking about earlier um, was that normalise starting over and, and do it as many times as you need to. So many of the things that inhibit people from change is fear. 
Yes. Uh, that, oh, why would I throw away something that I've been doing for 10 years? You're not throwing it away. It still exists and it was still wonderful. But if it's not serving you the way it needs to in a dynamic future with dynamic clients or customers who have different expectations, it normalise change. Normalise that it's okay to grow and and let go of things that don't serve you. Um, it's It's not easy to do that at all um, <laughs> because it takes a lot of self-reflection and yes. recognizing things that you may not have done so well yep um, but it's called growth and we all want to grow mm. you know <laughs> yeah yeah I'd also suggest maybe um, lean, lean on support so mm. I'm very lucky to have a, have a business partner with me to go go <laughs> yes. through this with damn yeah. straight <laughs> <laughs> but, um, particularly this one yeah, so, yeah, yeah particularly yeah. this one yeah. um, but like there's there's always people, so whether it's your family, whether it's peers, whether it's like even in our case, as much as we have each other, we have our clients, we have our friends, we have our family mm. to and lean on mentors. and support on. Our mentors. Our own yeah. mentors, yeah. Go. So um lean on those people because as much as 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 much as you are somewhat alone, especially if you're in you're in a small business on your own, um, there are people guaranteed there are people who are invested in your success and your mm. happiness that you can kind of lean on and kind of get honest and kind of constructive feedback from the small business yep. ecosystem is very supportive mm. i found i mean there's Great. certainly people that um that feel a bit protective of their patch and they might be a bit competitive yeah. sure. but that's okay um but mostly the the small business ecosystem that we move in or that we might attract are incredibly supportive and encouraging uh we rely on their goodwill and advice like we give back to others as well um, because I'm invested in other people's success and most people want you to succeed. So <laughs> they will help you. So ask. Um, ask is a really yeah. – it's hard for people to do because they it feel is. like they're pride or I should be able to do this. Or they don't even want – you know, they don't necessarily want other people to see behind the veil of their business. Yeah, that's right. Particularly as small business owners where it's often their baby or their creation and yeah. they – even if they know the vulnerabilities or the issues are there, they don't want to sort of show it because it's they've spent all this time and energy sort of creating this, what, yeah. is, it, what is essentially theirs. So there you go, two key takeouts for me. Your history is part of your brand identity as much as the future mm -hmm. and mentors always need mentors. Yeah, Totally, so. absolutely. And, you know, I think if you spoke to most um, senior business people, people have, you know, people have been in business a lot longer than we have, they have. They have resources that they speak to as well. A it's, network of people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank you, guys. If we're going to find you online, our listeners, where would we find you if we want to learn more about Good Hands? So thegoodhands.com.au, um, although it is under construction. <laughs> um, Watch this space. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, we, we, we're being quite adventurous with our website, so we'll get there. Technically but, ambitious, taking a bit of time. Yeah. That makes sense, um, yes. Our Instagram. Uh, at the underscore good hands. Um, that's probably that's about it. That's probably our main, yeah. start, our main channels. Yeah. Start with Instagram and watch this space on Instagram for the website. Yeah, it's so. yes. coming soon. Uh, very yeah. exciting. Lee, Roy, thank you so much. Thanks uh, for, for having coming us. This week. No worries, it's been a pleasure. Great thank you. Thank you for listening to Wingrove Street. This podcast is brought to you by the Melbourne Innovation Centre. If you are a small business or startup in need of support, we're here to help. We offer services and support across Victoria to accelerate your business growth. To find out more, head to www.melbourneinnovation.com.au.